Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.16 and Eagle Dynamics A10C2 Tank Killer Module. Welcome to tutorial 1, Startup. Today we're going to learn the basic startup for this aircraft using the APU. It's also possible to start up using ground power, uh, but uh, we might cover that in a future addendum. So uh, today we're sitting on the ramp at Incirlik, and uh, I'll go through all the basics of getting this aircraft up and running. Uh, now note, this is the upgraded version of the aircraft. So we have we have JDAMs, uh, we have APKWS, uh, we have the Scorpion helmet-mounted queuing system, and we have the fancy new, uh, is it ARC-210? I actually forget. <laughs> the fancy new version of the radio, yes, ARC-210. So, very first thing that we want to do, because we're not using ground power, we need to uh, establish power to the aircraft using the battery. Uh, main electric panel is here on the front of the right console. We're simply going to flip battery power to on, and you'll note that you don't really hear anything, but we now have some of the lights. Uh, that's because we only have uh, the battery DC power. We're now going to put the inverter into the standby position. And you'll then hear... Well, it sounds like a fan spin up, I think. Uh, you can hear the gyros and some other bits and bobs, and uh, some of the warning lights went out. I can actually, if I turn off the inverter, the nice thing about the caution and warning panel in the A10 is that whenever the state, whenever a light comes on um, or its state changes, it flashes, which is kind of nice. So we can see that the uh, the instruments uh, switch uh, is is flashing, and we've got left engine hot and right engine hot. That's simply because the engine instruments are not powered. So if we bring this, the inverter on, you see the uh, the off flags disappeared uh, on the, the ITT gauges for the engines, and the aircraft is now uh, powered. So before we continue, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a lamp test. You've got a push button here, signal lights, lamp test. I'm going to zoom out a bit so I can see them all. Push and hold. You should get all your lights, uh, and you should also hear your master caution. And note that this one here doesn't light up, that's because it's a spare. With that done, we're going to test the uh, fuel gauge. If we push the test indicator, we should get £3,000 left and right, and the totalizer should indicate 5900 which it does. Release, and that will go back to normal. We're now going to confirm that our oxygen supply is on. Uh, luckily, it defaults to the on position, so we're good to go there. Um, before starting the APU, we need to make sure the boost pumps are on, but again, these default to being on, so that's fine. I'm now going to move the camera a little bit, because uh, the part of the left console we want to see is a little bit kind of hidden. Uh, so here we go, we've got the APU start switch. All we have to do is flip this switch forward and then monitor the gauges, so I'm going to do that now. APU gauges are here and here. So this is the RPM in percent. This is the exhaust gas temperature of the APU. Uh, APU is going to stabilize at uh, between 450 and 400 Celsius normally. That's it. Wait for the EGT to come back down again. That's looking pretty normal. Excellent. We can now turn on the APU generator with this switch. And you'll notice that a bunch more of the warning lights have now extinguished and our primary flight instruments just uh, got powered. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to close the canopy. One click puts it into hold, and then a click and hold will lower the canopy. Excellent. That's going to be a little bit quieter for us now. Going to get some internal lighting up and going here. So... I'm going to go 50% on engine instruments, 50% on aux instruments, 50% on flight instruments. I'm going to go full intensity on console, and I'll leave the floods off. We're, we're early morning, so we don't need that much lighting. Great. And then in preparation for starting the engines, uh, we're going to turn on the uh, external lights. So uh, we need to push the pinky switch forwards for that. Uh, let me see if I can remember, because I think the pinky switch default is left shift and P. Let's see if I got it right. Nope, that's wrong. Left control and P. 
There we go. Left control and P. You'll note that the anti-collision is magnetically held. So unless you have the pinky switch in the correct position, you can't engage the exterior lights. This is kind of good. The pinky switch on the throttle, in effect, acts as a master mode switch for your exterior lights. So when you fence in, you can very quickly and easily turn it off. In any case, we're going to go anti-collision to on, because we're about to start the engines, and position lights to steady. If I go to the exterior, you'll now see we've got steady nav lights and flashing anti-collision, and just the APU running there. Cool. The other thing we're going to do, because it takes a little bit of time, is we're going to get the Iggy uh, up and running. That's the navigational system of the aircraft. It's a blended GPS INS system, and it's controlled primarily through what's called the CDU, which is this unit here. So we're going to power the CDU, the display kind of flashed up for a moment, and we're also going to power the Iggy. Uh, and that will mean that the Iggy will immediately go into an automated alignment. Uh, I'll give this a, a couple of moments to get going before we actually fire up the engines. Um, yeah, the CDU will do its own built-in test, uh, and then it will take you directly to the alignment page where an automatic alignment will begin. You can change some of these parameters, and you can do different types of alignment. We're going to default to the standard alignment today. We're not going to do anything clever. Uh, I will almost certainly demonstrate additional ways of aligning the aircraft in the future. So this shouldn't take too much longer. Oop, there we go, and we're now in the alignment page. So it's complaining that the IFFCC is not ready. Uh, that's the system that powers the HUD. Um, and uh, if we look over here, we've also got the KICQ, which is the system that powers the, uh, the main displays as well. All of that should remain off for engine start. Uh, but this is going ahead to do its alignment here. You can see it's in init attitude mode, uh, and then it'll actually begin the alignment. So in any case, with that done, uh, starting the engines is very, very simple in this aircraft. Uh, all you have to do, again, we're going to look at the front of the left console. You've got the main uh, engine mode switches here. So again, make sure all the boost pumps are on, uh, make sure fuel flow is normal, and then make sure that your engine operating switches are in the normal center position. If you push them down into motor, then the engines will motor, funnily enough, and, and they'll do that immediately, no matter what position the throttles are in. Uh, so actually, I could demonstrate that. We'll put the left into motor, and you'll note we start to get oil pressure, and we've got RPM. So basically, right now, the, the APU is spinning the left engine without any ignition. Uh, and you would do that, oh, we even got a little bit of hydraulics there. Yeah, <laughs> the left hydraulic system came up. Um, you would do that if you've had a, a hung start and you're trying to clear the engine of, of fuel. If we put that back to normal, it will immediately stop motoring and the engine will spool back down. So you can see that engine's spinning right now, but it's coming down. We'll let it uh, come back to normal. Uh, and yeah, you do also, the, you, the ignition position is spring-loaded. Uh, I could flip it forwards into ignition and hold it, and that would fire the igniters. We can't actually hear them from the cockpit, though. In any case, we want this to be in normal, and we want the APU running. Uh, we can then press left, uh, sorry, right, alt, and home to advance the left throttle out of cutoff, and that will begin an automated engine start, just like that. And now we're going to monitor the engine instruments here. So you can see RPM is climbing. And you also see the warning light engine start cycle. So that will remain illuminated while the starter valve is open. Um, that'll take a little bit of time. And then we should note that the engine stabilizes at uh, around about 56% RPM. Uh, and we don't, we don't want to see it uh, exceeding uh, any of its... Um, red lines on in, on the EGT and such like. If we saw it exceeding, then we would immediately pull the throttle back to cut off. That looks to be it pretty much started up. We'll wait for the start light to go out. That's a good engine start. Oh, something I should have mentioned earlier, uh, we start the engines with the AC generators for both engines in the on position. So as soon as the engine comes on, it is actually already supplying power to the aircraft. Okay, let's start the right engine now. Same process, but this time it's right control in home. And that begins an automated engine start. RPM is climbing. We've got 
oil pressure, we've got hydraulic pressure, EGT is rising. You also note that fuel flow should quite quickly break the red line. Still coming up. Give you an external view for a moment. Fans are turning. Very nice. Stabilised, and the light should go out. Okay, light is out. Perfect. Uh, and you'll see the EGT drops quite quickly again once the starter valve closes. That's the APU no longer doing any work. Okay, we're going to turn off the APU generator. It's no longer needed. And actually, we'll get a master caution if we shut down the APU with the generator still on. APU switch hidden down here. We just flip it to the off position. And down comes the APU. That's looking pretty good. And with that done, the next thing that I like to do is bring on the displays. So we can move the power switches for these displays into day, because we're daytime today, and then flip the kick you switch up into the on position, and that will power uh, the kind of main part of the avionics. While that's happening, I'm going to move the IFCC switch into the middle position for test. And if I then look up to the HUD, it's going to say engage pre-flight bit, uh, bit, yes, if I press enter on the UFC, that will now run the pre-flight bit while these uh, displays are coming on. So we'll give that a little bit of time to continue to do its thing. Actually, something that I'll do while I'm waiting on that is I'll hide the stick. As it kind of gets in the way for some, some of the things we're going to do in just a moment with the navigational systems. Okay, there we go. We've got displays. Uh, okay, it's uh, complaining about the, the dismiss, uh, our inventory. We'll just acknowledge that pull one up, away. Pull up. Okay, we're getting the GCAS test running now. Altitude, altitude. Okay, that was a good good one on the GCAS. And that looks good. No failures found. So we can press enter to exit that. And then using the select rocker, we can go down to exit and exit and... Uh, if you wanted to, you would now be able to set your things like your display modes and things like that. If I go into display modes here, um, you, if you want to use tapes, I actually I quite like to use the tapes. You can use the data rocker to turn things on and off. Um, you can choose if you want to have true airspeed, ground speed, Mac IS or just IS. I'm going to leave that as it is. And yeah, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to bother with the rest of these. Oh, actually, something I do like to do is. CCIP gun cross occlusion. I turn that off because it can be a bit annoying. And then exit to the main menu. And then we can simply go IFCC all the way up to the on position. And we now have our default HUD. I'm also going to put the JTRS to the on position at this time as well. That's the data link, just so you're aware. Okay, on the right multifunction display, we're going to bring up the CDU page. This is just a repeater for the CDU down here. Saves you having to move your head all the way down there. And you can see we're in INS nav ready. At this time, we can choose nav master mode for the INS. And that uh, brings our navigational systems alive. And in the master mode for our navigational system, we're going to put it into Iggy. That makes the Iggy the, the primary source. And we're going to enable steer point navigation. And it will use the steer points in the system for navigating the aircraft. Next, I'm going to load the data cartridge. Uh, DTS upload page is already here. If it wasn't, uh, you can actually push and hold any of these buttons and go to load page. And I'm going to replace com with load just now. Uh, and I'm going to say load all. You could individually load different things, but we're going to load the entire data cartridge. So we'll give that a little bit of time. That will load all the data. Your waypoints, stores, uh, TGP settings, what pages we want, all that sort of stuff. Once the asterisks reappear on these different categories, the load is complete. Done. There we go. That's all working nicely. Now I'm going to bring up the TAD on the left-hand side. Uh, I'm actually going to go to uh, own to hook. I actually prefer that setting. And at this time, we would check our data link. We can go into net, make sure that our own ID, group ID, and call sign are all correct. Uh, in this case, they are. I can go back to TAD. So that's looking good. Uh, now it's really just a case of kind of extinguishing all the warning lights. So if I move across here, you can see that uh, 
We still have warnings for pitch and yaw sass. Our EAC is off, seat's not armed, and the anti-skid is not on. We can resolve all of those in pretty short order. Uh, front of the left-hand uh, console here, we've got our different SAS switches. So left and right yaw channels, left and right pitch channels. And then this is the EAC switch here, just behind the throttle. That can go to on. We're going to arm the seat using this lever here. And we're going to turn on taxi lights by pushing that switch down. Anti-skid at this time can come to on. If I go over here, all the warning lights are now out. Okay, uh, setting up my CDU the way I want it, I'm going to move the master mode to flight plan. I'm going to move this page mode to steer, and it's now showing steer point information. That's good. Uh, looking down at my TACAN, I'm going to put the TACAN into transmit and receive. And for this airfield, we want 21 X-ray. And I'm also going to power my ILS receiver and put it into 111 decimal 7. That's now configured as well. Uh, helmet mounted queuing system, or the, the Scorpion, uh, that's going to go to the on position. And now if I look outside the cockpit, the helmet is now operating normally. That's great. It automatically blanks when I look inside the cockpit. That's all correct. Down the left hand console, we're going to turn on all of our radios. So the 210 can go to transmit, receive and uh, guard. Uh, this uh, UHF radio here can go to main. And uh, I think this is the NAV, no, this is the FM radio here. This can go to transmit and receive. So that's all correctly configured there now. Excellent. Uh, standby instruments, we're going to go ahead. Oh, you can see it's testing the display there. And now we're on 251. Uh, standby artificial horizon is uncaged and configured. Uh, the altimeter, we're going to reset to a lek. And the pneumatic flag will disappear. On the right hand side here, I'll leave the CDU up and uh, we're now going to enable our uh, defensive countermeasures. This system can go into standby. Uh, this is the EW uh, panel here and uh, dispenser goes to on and then we can flip it up to the menu to confirm the program we currently have. So currently it's uh, two chaff, interval one second, 10 cycles. Um, if we hit return, it'll go back and it'll show us that's program A. We could flip through the programs uh, as we desire, and then RWR, jammer, and missile warning system all go to on. We're not carrying the jammer today, so it's going to it's going to indicate off in any case. Uh, what else do we need to turn on at this stage? I think we're pretty much done. Uh, we could program the radio at this point, and if we're using the 210, that's really quick and easy because we can just use the upfront controller um, tower here. Let's actually move that viewpoint up a little so we can see what we're doing. It's on 360.1, so I just type that into the scratch pad, press COM1, and you'll see frequency is confirmed there. And it's also confirmed on the head down here as well, 360.1. Okay, let's do a quick scan of the cockpit, but I think we're looking pretty good. Uh, systems are all pretty much as they should be. Uh, we'll put the HUD recorder into standby, just for uh, role-playing purposes. Uh, at this point, we could pop the flaps down into their takeoff position. And there really isn't anything else to do at this point. We are ready for taxi. Pito heat remains off at this point, but we'll turn it on on entering the runway. That's looking pretty good. And we can ask the ground crew to remove the chocks. And that's it. We're now ready for taxi. That's the entire procedure for starting up the A10C2 tank killer. I hope you all enjoyed that. Fly safe, and I'll see you next time.